So for the past couple of days, a lot of us here on YouTube have been hard at work comparing these new M2 Pro and M2 Max MacBook Pros. I've honestly been pretty surprised by the noticeable improvements year over year that we're seeing here. Comparing to the M1 Pro and the M1 Max, honestly, these things are holding up pretty well. But while it obviously makes sense to compare the M2 Pro to the M1 Pro, that's not how pretty much anyone is gonna operate. I ran a community poll the other day, which revealed that a whopping two thirds of you guys plan on keeping a laptop for five plus years. So with that in mind, today we're gonna compare the M2 Pro MacBook Pro to something a little bit more realistic. The five and a half year old 2017 13 inch, wake you, hello? Oh God, it crashed. <sighs> it's a touch bar MacBook Pro from 2017. What do you expect? Oh, hey, welcome back. I just got it restarted. How about that? This is my 2017 13 inch four Thunderbolt port touch bar MacBook Pro, and it comes equipped with a 3.3 gigahertz dual core KB Lake Core i5 Intel Iris Plus graphics 650, 16 gigabytes of LP DDR3 RAM, and a 512 gigabyte SSD. Now, when this thing was new, it would have set you back a whopping $2,399 which is conveniently only about $100 different from this, the 14 inch M2 Pro MacBook Pro with the 12 core CPU, 19 core GPU, 16 gigs of RAM, and the one terabyte SSD. So this is a pretty interesting comparison. If you were buying a class of laptop like this back in 2016 or 2017, then you're looking at this right now. It's the exact same category and oh gosh, holy cow. Things have changed, folks. This comparison honestly blew my f mind because like when you're in the tech review space, you tend to be very plugged in, right? Every time there's a new chip that comes out, we're comparing it versus the chip it replaces and we're always looking forward. We're very rarely looking back more than one or two generations for relevant comparisons. But when you do stop and run tests on computers that are five years apart, it really puts it in perspective just how much is changing right now. And I think it's weird because there's this sense of stagnation in technology. Whenever there's a new smartphone that comes out, everyone always says, oh, it looks the same as the last one, or oh, it looks the same as the other guys. But flagship mainstream laptops and desktops right now are having a major major revolution, the likes of which I don't think we've seen since the turn of the millennium. Let me hit you with a benchmark real quick. Cinebench R23. On our new MacBook Pro, we're looking at a score of 14,753. What about this MacBook Pro? 4,000? 5,000? Nope. 2,540. The new MacBook Pro is seven times faster. Granted, the new one has six times the number of cores as well, but they're both relatively thin, relatively light laptops. They both have similar TDPs. We are talking about an outrageous increase in performance within the same products class within half a decade. Let me hit you with another one, all right? GFX Bench, the 4K Aztec off-screen test. This is a great one for testing the capability of a well-optimized GPU. And sure enough, we get 91 FPS on the M2 Pro and the M2 Max with 38 cores. Well, that gets 180 FPS. Makes sense, scales very well. How about the 13-inch Intel MacBook Pro? What do you think? You're wrong, it's eight. Eight FPS. Oh geez, okay, uh, well what about, what about the Manhattan test? That one's 1080p, so maybe this guy can do okay. And look at that, it got 99 FPS, that's impressive. Uh oh, oh no. Yeah, the M2 Pro did 1100. Bro, these things are five years apart. That's not that long a time. There are still people out there, I know there are that are gonna be watching this very video on an iPhone 10. That's the same age as this laptop. And it just shows up over and over and over again. Hey, you wanna run Blender? 
Well, not on this you don't, because I fired up the classroom CPU test, which takes five minutes and 49 seconds on the M2 Pro. That's basically identical to the M2 Max, which took five minutes and 42 seconds. So how long did this take? Oh, 32 minutes and 50 seconds. And that's with the CPU, by the way. Turn on the GPU, you don't wanna turn on the GPU. A minute and 34 seconds on the 19 core M2 Pro, 1741 on Intel. And that's accelerated with the Metal API, which isn't even that well optimized for the M2 Pro. Oh, are you sleeping or are you dead? Okay, you're just sleeping. You gotta watch out with this thing, it kernel panics a lot. Okay, Final Cut Pro. This one, this one absolutely took me by surprise, okay? Even given all of those other benchmarks that I told you about, this one might still knock your socks off. Okay, so we're talking about a 30 minute 4K 60 FPS 10 bit file, rendering a color correction on that. Now, that's a pretty beefy boy, but I've gotten very used to the numbers as we see them now. If you look at this result on a bevy of 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, you can see our M2 Max leading the pack at just under eight minutes and the slowest one out there, the M1 Pro at just over 10. A couple of days ago, I was looking at that very graph and going, well, you know, the M2 Max is a pretty noticeable improvement. You're saving two minutes. That's pretty decent. So what would happen if you were editing your videos on one of these still? Well, I fired up the render and it, it did not, it was not fast. Kill me. It took two hours and 47 minutes to render that clip on this computer. Remember, eight minutes, three hours. Should I just end the video here? I just don't, how, how are we in this situation? I've got to compose myself here because I forgot one benchmark, okay? It was Blender, BMW, the GPU render. Let's, let's put a comparison up on screen. I don't even, I don't even know. I don't know what to say. This is, it, but the thing that's kind of blowing my mind yet again is that the performance differences aren't even arguably the most important thing that has changed between these machines. Just the experience of using it. I mean, obviously there's the butterfly keyboard. We all know about the butterfly keyboard. I don't need to go get into a whole other discussion on that situation. But where would you like me to start? Screen? All right, let's do it. Well, this is a 2560 by 1600, 13.3 inch retina display. And sure, it's got the pixel density, but that's about it. Bezels, mm. Size, mm. It's, uh, it's fine. But when you look at the mini LED ProMotion display that you can now get on these MacBook Pros, you will never wanna look at this ever again. I would argue that this is an upgrade as significant as moving to the Retina display back in 2012. Another thing that makes a world of difference, well, that's uh, effective cooling. These things are notorious for being incredibly badly designed, but we mainly focus our criticism on the bigger brother, the 15 inch, and specifically those Core i9s that came out in 2018 and thermal throttled to heck, and that's a whole thing that you guys probably remember. But even this puny, pathetic little dual core CPU is still not adequately cooled, even with two cooling fans, which is what you got with the four Thunderbolt port model. You fire up a Cinebench run, and what do you notice? Well, very quickly, the old machine is running right up to that 90 degree threshold. It hits it much faster than the M2 Pro. And look what happens then. Oh, fans, fans are coming on. They don't come on on the M2 Pro. M2 Pro staying nice and quiet, but now you can already within a minute hear the fans 
on the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now, sure enough, after a little while, the temperatures weirdly seem to equalize. The, the M2 Pro gets up to 95, 100 degrees, just like this Intel machine. But the key difference here is that when I go in and manually max out the fans, just send them on their way, look at what happens. Notice how the Intel machine is barely moving. It's still in the 90s, but the M2 Pro is going down and down and down and down. And eventually you get to this weird point where you realize, oh gosh, this thing just sucks. The 13 inch MacBook Pro cannot keep that dual core CPU under 90 degrees Celsius with two fans. That's one fan per core of CPU and it can't keep it cool. Every single component of this machine has been re-engineered from the ground up. These aren't even comparable laptops. They might look very similar, but they are not even in the same universe. You know, I thought that this whole video was basically gonna be just me laughing at a butterfly keyboard MacBook Pro. We all know that I've done it a lot and I'll do it again, but it really did change my perspective on things. It's not as though I didn't expect results like this. I, I very much did, but it really just goes to show you that when you take a step back and, and look at things in perspective, where we are now versus where we were a couple of years ago, instead of just last month, basically, things are crazy, absolutely crazy right now. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed and I will catch you in the next one.